here. Okay, so let me do my little stick, and then we are going to get to it. So, okay. hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben. I am the creator of the Beanie Sleeper, which is the head wrap with the built-in sleep mask that blocks light and keeps your head warm and comfy without overheating. And welcome to Sleeping with Ben, my live podcast. Today, my guest is a friend of mine. Her name is Janice Skidmore. I have an intro here, so I want to read it because she deserves every word of it. So this, here we go. So Janice Skidmore is the owner of Right Mind Creative. I love the name. A company she created and developed to provide affordable, customized quality branding, brand development, and social media management for entrepreneurs and small businesses. But that's not all. She is a Marine Corps veteran, German Shepherd fanatic, and we have to get into that a little bit, dancing freak, which I love, manager of the newly form, uh, forming New Mexico chapter of Teal Heart, Teal Heart Peer-to-Peer Network via the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition, and is herself an ovarian cancer survivor. Janice, welcome. Did I miss Hi. anything? No, that's everything. Okay, good. So you and I have talked on Monday. We have a, we have a monthly talk. We catch up. We exchange ideas. It's so much fun. It's one of the one things I look most forward to on Mondays. But you also told me, when I asked you kind of how you want this to go, you said you wanted to focus primarily on the ovarian cancer. Um, and that part of your life, which I, I want to get to, but I need to give you some props for your business. So I kind of, can we, I want to start a little bit at your business because the name, I love the name, Right Mind Creative, because I know for me, when I started all three of my businesses, I don't know if I was ever in my right mind. And I don't know if you're ever in your right mind when you start this journey as an entrepreneur. So can, can you talk a little bit about uh, Right Mind Creative and kind of how that got going? Yeah, so it started out, I've always been a writer. There's never been a time in my life when I wasn't writing. I was writing commercials and jingles and designing ads when the rest of the kids were, you know, playing hide and seek. <laughs> You know, I played that too, but I was always writing and I was always advertising. And um, so I, I worked for other companies as a writer, either uh, freelance writing or as, you know, their brand manager. And um, I realized as I was working in that environment that there is a real need for entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and startups and small businesses to have affordable branding. Uh, it's, a, it's a niche that is under met, and I'm glad to fill it, and uh, it involves a lot of writing. So when I made my writing, my company name put W-R-I-T instead of write, because write mind means creative, right? But I'm a writer, so <laughs> it's the right mind. Uh, so a I lot of times, a person's right mind, you know. I love it. You know, so here you are starting your own business, Right Mind Creative. Did you have anybody you look to to help you get started, or did you kind of make it up from whole cloth as you went along? You know, I, I kind of made it up on my own because uh, I, what I recognize for a small business, the, the needs that a small business or an entrepreneur or startup has uh, is not fully met in terms of um, what a branding agency might offer them. So I'm rewriting. I'm re. I'm recreating the whole thing, and I have. I've recreated the whole process, <laughs> and I'm. I uh, believe that rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> nice. What is that? Move, uh, move fast, break things is yeah. kind of like the Silicon Valley model. I don't know. That's a little scary, but I'm totally with you on that. I mean, I got to say for. Really, for my last two startups, one was a software company, and I don't code. So it's literally like, how do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I had nobody to talk to about that. Um, so I think it's really great. Even with this company, I had to find a factory. I've never made anything in my life. And again, nobody to go to. So I love that you're providing kind of like somebody to hold their hand a little bit. Because yes. I, I think that's really needed, especially when you're really young and you have a lot of outside forces. You know, it needs to be a 10x. I need to get this kind of uh, financing. Ugh, it's just a lot. 
Thank you so much for telling us that. Should I ask before? <laughs> so you're a German Shepherd fanatic? Is that, is that true? Yes, there's two of them right here with me right now, my two that I own. <laughs> so I love German Shepherds. Uh, they're just the smartest. I'm not there, I know other dog breeds are very smart and everything. But, uh, okay, hold on, hold on. We're not hating. We love all dogs, but you can love on yours. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so they're just super, super smart, and the way they communicate. Um, if people think that animals don't communicate, they just never spend enough time with them. For example, this morning, uh, my one of my shepherds wanted to go outside, and he moved behind me. And he moved behind me because that was him telling me, I want you to come with me. You know, and so it's just, you just have to pay attention to what they're saying. And then I just looked at him and I said, no, nope, not yet. <laughs> and yeah, went, I got to I I think... say, I, I grew up with dogs. I love dogs. But living in New York, I knew immediately I could never do it. It's just too difficult. Um, but I have cats now. And I kind of think... It's almost the same way with cats. You've got to, like, pay attention because they're going to tell you what they need exactly. if you listen. So being a good cat dad that I am, I'm a, I listen. And you're a definitely good dog mom. Yes. So, let me, so um, now, you were just, when we first started talking, you told me about a, um, a program. I want to get this right. called Teal Heart Peer-to-Peer -Peer Network via the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition. Coalition. Do you want to start there and kind of tell me about that before we go into maybe the earlier times? Sure, yeah. So what I'm doing with that is um, in uh, it, it, there's so much to it. Uh, so in 2019, I had an all-clear OB visit. And although I had been experiencing some symptoms, it wasn't um, – I was one of the people who believed that uh, the, if there was, anything was wrong, the doctor would have caught it. And, um, and, and it wasn't anything that I could relate to reproductive health in any way because, unfortunately, in this day and age, persons born with ovaries are not educated about their reproductive health. They're not educated about things such as ovarian cancer. It's not mentioned. It's not talked about. So I ended up in the ER two months later with severe abdominal pain that I was assuming was appendicitis but it turned out to be a large mass in what used to be one of my ovaries, and it was cancerous. Well, at that time, we weren't sure. Uh, I found out during surgery in April of 2020 that it was, in fact, cancerous. And as I remember my doctor coming in and telling me, we found cancer. And I was laying in the bed saying, I'm so mad. And she's like, I understand. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> I'm not mad about the diagnosis. I'm not mad that I had to have the surgery. I'm mad that I didn't know, that no one told me a thing about ovarian cancer in all the years I'd gone to doctors, all the years I'd seen OBs, not one word was mentioned. So when I got home from surgery, uh, as soon as I was well enough, I contacted the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition, and I said, I volunteer, put me to work. Whatever you need or want me to do, I'm there. And uh, so they said, well, hang on, you gotta go through chemo first. <laughs> So um, done with chemo, hair growing back, and in full uh, what we call now no evidence of disease and kicking butt. So by the National Cancer Coalition, I started the New Mexico chapter of the Teal Hearts Network, which is uh, my way to reach out to persons born with ovaries about the sciences and risks so they don't wake up like I did. You know... It's sheer bravery, honestly, that that's the first thing you said. Instead of, oh, my gosh, I have cancer, you said, I should have known about this. Or you, the doctor, it's your job to know about this and to tell me. But I hear about this all the time. Now, I'm a man. I don't have the same experience when I go to a doctor. But I hear this all the time from the women in my life and the women I know that – it's, it's completely almost second class as far as like uh, definitely uh, cancers and definitely like heart attacks and definitely other major medical issues. So this isn't surprising to hear from you. It's just more sad. But I love now I think I'm, I'm going to ask you this because I get the feeling like maybe your Marine Corps background gave you a little bit more <clears throat> to go in their face. So is that accurate, or am I just, like, reading into this fantasy of a Marine Corps officer? 
No, that is 3,000% accurate. Uh, so first of all, before I ever joined the Marine Corps, I was a very strong, physically, emotionally strong person. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was always bold, always the tomboy, if you will, because that was a label that they, they I was a, an assertive female with a uh, kind of masculine um, presence aura. And so they labeled me as a tomboy for that, <laughs> which is, you know, these days I love that the kids are doing away with the labels and broadening the spectrum yeah. of everything. So uh, I joined the Marine Corps because of that, because it was right for me. And um, that training and that, or my, my, my personality that I was born with, in addition to the training that I received, uh, the leadership skills that I gained, that I grew, mm -hmm. um, it put me in warrior mode. I, I, the one thing that I learned, because I joined when I was 17 years old, and the one thing that I learned that shaped me so much is that you can be a victim or and die. You know, you can just be, and, and I'm talking combat ways. You can, uh, or you can stay, keep a straight, steady mind, stay focused, and look at the mission and accomplish the mission. And so I made this my mission to make a change with the way that ovarian cancer is not spoken about, that persons born with ovaries are completely denied the information they need to have. I'm changing that. President Biden will sign my petition into law. <laughs> it will happen. That's amazing. I mean, first of all, to have that at 17 or even or thereabouts in your early 20s to come to uh, the understanding of, of, of who you are, your place in the world, and that you should be heard, I think is amazing. I mean, I, I was not there at 17. I don't think I was there until I was in my 30s, to be honest with you. So I think that says a lot about you and your stamina and your family and how you, I, that says so much about you. And, and of course, it makes sense that you approach it. Um, Talk to me a little about um, what did you do? So you go so you, right out of surgery. You're like, it should not happen. How can I help? What can I do? But then they say, listen, you're going to go through chemo first. Talk to me afterward. Did you think that was a was that good advice? Do you think, or were you like even during chemo, you were like ready to get up and, and play ball? Oh, oh no, no, chemo was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Uh, I used to run a six-minute mile, uh, so I've always been in very good shape. And uh, with chemotherapy, I, walking from one chair to another chair, I'd have to sit and rest uh, because it, it, it affects your blood count so badly. My white blood cell count was very low. My red blood cell count was way too high, and that all affects your ability to function. Red blood cell count can do a lot <laughs> in your ability to function, I learned. And so um, I just kept – on the dark days, on the days when I thought, is this ever going to end? Why, why wake up? I don't want to wake up. I don't want to go to sleep because it's closer to chemo. Because with this type of cancer, they give you two types of chemo. They give you carboplatin and taxol here in the States. It's a little different mm -hmm. in Europe uh, or Australia, but here it's carboplatin and taxol. And they're, they're very tough on the body. Um, obviously, all well, your hair falls out and your blood cell counts get messed up crazily, like with any chemo, but it seemed extreme. <laughs> it seemed, because I knew other people that were on chemo and they were doing okay and I couldn't walk, you know, barely without pain and everything. And so um, on the dark days when I thought, I don't want to do this, if this is living, I don't want to do this. But I kept saying to myself, the, the science behind, see ovarian cancer has such low funding the science hasn't changed. This is the same chemotherapy that we've gotten since the 80s. Nothing's changed. Wow. And so there is no immunotherapy yet, as there is with breast cancer and other, other types of cancers. Uh, so um, it's, it's kind of uh, the not sexy cancer to get because it's, there's no funding, et cetera. We're not taught about it. And uh, so I just told myself I'm going to change that. I, you know, we don't know any one of us if we have three minutes to live or 30 years to live. So whatever time I have, it's my mission to make change. I, let me ask you something. Um, just, well, two things. One, um, when I found out my best friend had a non Hopkins lymphoma and he was going through the dark days, you gave me some sound advice. And I'm so grateful that I have you who could kind of help me to understand a little better because 
I don't think I could ever understand. I could only be there to hopefully hold his hand or support or something. But um, I'm really, um, when you said there's such little funding for ovarian cancer, I'm, I'm so surprised in the sense that, because do I have these backwards? But if you have breast cancer, aren't you like exponentially more likely to get ovarian cancer or is it the reverse? So uh, genetics come into play to a certain extent. Uh, some cancers, some breast cancers and or ovarian cancers have no genetic reason to exist. They just happen, <laughs> which is um, kind of the better route to go, if you will, if that happens. Because on average, um, that means that that cancer can be one and done. Um, unfortunately, uh, females, I, uh, persons born with a female body uh, are, if they have a genetic uh uh, they call it, uh, what's it called? A genetic mutation is what it's referred to at this time. So a genetic mutation being uh, the bre breast cancer antigen, BRCA1 or 2 genetic mutation, and there's a couple others. If you're born with those mutations, they can be given to you from one or both parents, uh, and those put you at a higher risk for different types of cancer. In my case, I came back as BRCA2 positive, um, and that puts me at a very high risk for breast cancer and a, and, a, and a high risk for ovarian cancer, but at a slightly lower risk for ovarian cancer. For whatever reason, my body said, hey, we'll start down here first. <laughs> and so, um, so that is, now all those parts are gone. Uh, and so my next surgery will be a double mastectomy. Uh, to remove oh the for, yeah to remove the potential for breast cancer. Um, oh, not we're, we're we're that. To make that decision. I'm choosing to make that decision because I have a mission. I really have for me personally, I'm not talking about anybody else and their decisions, but for me, my mission is to make a change about how ovarian cancer is hidden and bring it out to light. And so I'm having a double mastectomy to up my odds for not having cancer again and to be able to fight on. Wow, I mean, this is, you never shared that with me in any of our talks and I can understand that's incredibly personal. And again, your bravery for talking about it and talking about the connection because these are not disparate things. They are related, and they're related as um, people with female parts, and they, they need to be looked at as related. Um, I want to talk to you about what you're doing with the National Ovarian um, Cancer Coalition. You started the, the um, project in New Mexico, right? So how's that, how's that going? How's that, how's that been working out? Um, very good. A little slow to start because I was still sick. I had to get, obviously, during COVID, I got hit with the three C's during 2020. Um, the, the fear, the, the awareness of COVID that I could catch it and die because of my white blood cells being so low. Uh, so cancer, chemo, and uh, COVID were all present for me in 2020. So now I'm fully vaccinated. Right now, no evidence of disease. And so <laughs> I'm ready to rock on. Oh, you, you just had a clean scan in COVID. Yes, yes. That was awesome. I remember we, that was great. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For sharing that with me. <laughs> or for sharing that support with me. So, uh, I just, what, yeah. yeah. So I so you're so it's a slower start with your um the coalition the peer to peer um so you're working on that. Um, I just wanted to explain what I'm doing with that very quickly. Oh yeah, please, please do, please do. Okay, so um, I'm trying to spread the word to the persons born with ovaries in the state of New Mexico that this is a real thing we all need to pay attention to and to bring it out of hiding. So I'm looking to I'm already working on teaming up with someone who is fluent in Spanish because I'm. Uh, I'm a first generation American, but my parents did not speak Spanish, so I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so I am coming up with uh, people uh, native. Uh, there's, a, there's a large Navajo population here, Pueblo, uh, other indigenous um, member persons here. And so I am uh, teaming up with anyone in those communities so I can get my boots on the ground and really spread the word with that support. As a first generation American, I can tell you, I understand how it feels to maybe not trust those other people. Mm -hmm. My parents came here individually. They didn't have family here. Uh, I didn't then have family here. So 
I want, I understand I need to get in the communities and that's what I'm working on to spread the word, to spread awareness. It also enables me to provide them, anyone newly diagnosed with a tote, a Faces of Hope tote via the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition that they can bring to chemotherapy with them. It's got a nice soft blanket, you can pack your water in there. And that tote is something that, that gives comfort. It just reminds you that you're not alone. Yeah, I, um, you and I talk about, I talked about that on Monday, and I'm going to try and get involved with that because I I want to do as much as I can. I'm a brand new business, but I want to do as much as I can to show support with Beanie Sleeper because it's amazing. My early adopters, and this was a sh by sheer accident, are people going through chemo treatment because they found it comforting when they're in the room, in the chair, to ha have the ability to block out the light. They, they're keeping their head warm but not getting too hot, body temperatures. So I found it as such a, I mean, I want to say a blessing that we found each other because that's really where I've, my business has been driving. Um, so I'm so glad uh, that we're connecting on that level as well because I do think it's incredibly important. Um, I want to ask you about, um, I kind of want to give another little shout out to your business because you just moved into this grand space, which means you're expanding. And I yeah. think it's amazing that in 2020, I always ask how has COVID, how has COVID affected your business? But for you, it almost seems like it kind of blew it up a bit because you, you got this great space, you're expanding your team. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yes, for sure. Thank you. So um, uh, I forgot my beanie sleeper. It's at home. I wore it last night. <laughs> I was going to bring it in to have if it for you. So if you wore it in the office, that could be a little weird. But it is your <laughs> office, so that could be appropriate. <laughs> I'm in my bedroom. So. See what I want. <laughs> so, um, so what happened for me was I was never out of business. I, I um, planned my business so that I could be off at, in April after my surgery so that I could have a couple weeks off for recovery. But uh, my clients were all still in business, and they all still needed my services. Granted, their businesses changed a bit to accommodate. Um, some of them had to close temporarily for state orders, which all happened right around the same time of my surgery, so it was beautiful. Uh, but uh, my businesses that I work with are still active and have been and still um, need services. And then word of mouth grows. They say, hey, um, you know, talk to Janice of Right Mind Creative. And, um, and so because of that, because of word of mouth referral, I'm growing and adding to my team. So, yeah, I love that. I think it's um, you are definitely of the growth mindset, which I love. I consider myself to be a part of that growth mindset, um, which I think in times like health issues or mental health issues um, or COVID or the darker times, that to be of a growth mind yeah. is comforting. And it's not easy, especially, like you said, on your darkest days, it's not easy to be in that growth mindset. But I think if it's at least somewhere there, we can go back to it. So I think that's amazing. I want to talk about now, um, like, your sleep habits. Because, you know, uh, being a sleeper, sleep. I, I do like to talk about sleep because mine has completely changed from before COVID, during COVID, now after, you know, things have more relaxed. My sleeping patterns have changed, and I have d different rituals I do. What are some of your um, rituals, maybe that you did or that you do now, that work for you, that, that help you get the rest you need? Yeah, so I would say um, everyone talks about there's, there's been some hidden blessings in COVID, for sure. And um, I was kind of fortunate, to, if you will, to go through my illness during that time because I, I have a big FOMO personality. <laughs> I, want, I love to live. I want to be involved in everything that's good, you know. And so and everything slowed down, and I learned to meditate. And so before I go to sleep now, I listen to meditation. Uh, you can find them uh, by Deepak Chopra and others that talk about as you lay down at night to let go of the day, that if, the, if work wasn't finished or if there was a, something that didn't go right, let it go, let it go, tomorrow's a new day. And so that really calms me down um, and reminds me uh, that the time is kind of an illusion. There's always enough time, there always is. And as long as I'm healthy enough to enjoy it and do what I do, 
it's all good. So I've learned to meditate and slow down. And so part of my uh, thing that I still do, um, I'm one of those people who wears myself out. I will be so active in a day. <laughs> I'll be so active in a day that I will pass out from exhaustion, <laughs> honestly. I'll be, I'll lay down and I cannot keep my eyes open. Uh, so when I, when I can, when I'm not so that, so badly exhausted, I do meditate. Um, I read for a bit and then I meditate and I listen to meditation and go to sleep. I love that. Um, it's so weird with me. Um, it's kind of like when the sun starts going down, I start to get like a little bit tired. So I feel, that's why I think why I get up so early in the morning. I'm at, I'm doing stuff by seven o'clock and no, no later because I know that I am most active in the morning. Um, but I, I love that. I just started um, doing some meditations. I, it, I find it very challenging to do them. But one thing I stopped doing is getting upset at myself for not doing them correctly. Yes. I, was like, I was like, I have to achieve this. I'm like, no. No. Just kind of do it. You don't have to achieve meditation. You don't right. win at meditation. Um, <laughs> so yes. I, I really... I love that. Um, I also listen to Rain. I have a one an app that has Rain, uh, which helps me a lot. Thank you so much. I how do people get a hold of you for either Right Mind Creative or for your other thing for the um, ovarian cancer? How do, how do how do we reach out to you? So you can um, the people can find me right here on Instagram under Right Mind Creative. You can just send me a message. I don't really have a personal Instagram because. I'm not one of those people that uh, puts myself all over social media. It's just not my thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not right for me. So I barely even post my business, uh, so it's bad. But uh, Right Mind Creative here on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook under Right Mind Creative as well. Uh, you can okay. find me on Facebook or Instagram under New Mexico Teal Hearts Network. It's uh, abbreviated to MNM and November Mar Marine, November Oscar. I'm sorry, not November Oscar. I'm saying something else. Uh, so NM, the New Mexico Teal Hearts Network. Um, you can reach out to me at my email, which is my name, Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E, at writemindcreative.com. And that is spelled W-R-I-T-E, as in writing, writemindcreative.com. Fabulous. And of course, I'll put all of your information in the info for the for this live uh, live chat, I want to thank you, Janice. I it's so funny. I never know how these conversations are going to go. I kind of like that. I mean, I, I have a set of questions, but most of the time I don't even pay attention to because I find that it, it's kind of like a little bit too controlling. But I love that we got to talk about a lot of stuff. I love that we learned that you're a great dog mom. You love your German Shepherd. I love. We didn't get into the dancing, but when I come out there, you and I will go dancing somewhere. But. Um, Definitely, yeah. uh, you know, I, I want to come back to New York and go to Fire Island. That's my place. Oh, I my God. My <laughs> yeah, New York is finally coming around, so I'm hoping another six months. But I do want to say thank you so much. Thank you for being on my show. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for telling us all about your journey and about, uh, about what's happening with your business. And thank you for sharing with us your great scans. I mean, I just have so much to thank you for. I want to thank my uh, audience for listening. Thank you so much. Once I upload this to um, to Instagram, you'll also be able to find it on Spotify. Uh, just uh, look up Sleeping With Ben. You'll be able to hear us on Spotify as well as my previous um, episodes. And so thank you so much. And please come back next week where I have another great guest. Always, it's always Thursday at 1 p.m. where you can come and cuddle with me. So, Janice, thank you for the cuddle. Thank you for um, being with me. And good night, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much, Ben. Bye, everybody. Bye.